What's up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Penny. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2022 Lexus ES350 courtesy of Bobby Ray Hall Lexus in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So I'm in this one today because there's actually a couple nice upgrades for the 2022 model year. And of course you have legendary Lexus reliability. My dad actually had an ES and he went 200,000 miles before actually trading it in. Not that anything was wrong with it, of course, but it was just time to upgrade after 200,000 miles, but probably could have gone a lot longer than that actually. But anyways, in this video, I will of course be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering for rod quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are a few different configurations to go with for the ES350. First one is gonna be that standard configuration, which actually is the one we have today, given we do have a couple options as well, but standard configuration starts at $40,800, F Sport for $45,450, Luxury for $46,200, and lastly, the Ultra Luxury starting at $49,980. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on this thing is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 302 horsepower, 267 pound-feet of torque, sent to the front wheels through an 8-speed automatic with paddle shifters. 0-60 to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.6 .6 seconds. Top speed, if you're interested, comes in at 131 miles per hour, with MPG numbers coming in at 22 in the city, 32 on the highway. But so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here, in our ES350. I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. And by the way, this always gets me with Lexus. It's interesting the placement of the drive mode adjustments. Essentially like a little stalk coming off the upper portion of just above the gauges, I guess you could say. So you turn it down for eco, you push it in for normal, and then you turn it up for sport. It's such an interesting placement for those drive modes. It's kind of a little bit of a reach, but I don't know, at least you always know where it is because it's kind of in your line of vision so you can continue to watch the road as well. And very good turning radius right there, by the way. I usually always turn there and uh, definitely got the job done. But anyways, I did want to add to that. If you were to go with the F Sport trim level, you're also going to get a Sport Plus driving mode as well. And by the way, drive modes adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. So now, having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? I'm going to set up my GoPro here. Let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first. Let's see how quickly they are going to react for us here. All right, you guys, here's our paddle shifter test in three, two, one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Definitely a delay, unfortunately. Pretty hefty delay too. So I like the paddle shifters are there because it does snow in Pennsylvania. When it does snow, what you can do is use those paddle shifters for a little bit of engine braking. So when you're going down a hill, possibly, instead of actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can actually downshift and then therefore you do a little bit of engine braking so you're less likely to go ahead and slide off the road. So I like that they're there for that reason. But again, having said that, definitely a delay to them. But anyways, let's now get back full control to the ES350 here and let's now do a quick little acceleration test. And let's see if this thing really feels like zero to 60 in 6.6 .6 seconds. All right, you guys, so we got a little bit of wet roads here, but in three, two, one, go. Okay, spinning, still spinning. Come on, stop spinning. <laughs> We're in sport driving mode, but yeah, there it is. All right, plenty of get up and go once you actually get some traction, but again, with all of that power, and it's a quite a bit of power being sent to just the front wheels, you're gonna get some slipping when it's wet out and when it's raining, like it is right now. So having said that, the ES250 comes available with all-wheel drive. The 350 does not still, for whatever reason. If I were Lexus, I would definitely at least offer an all-wheel drive configuration for the ES350, just so you can connect a little better with those accelerations. And also, because I live in Pennsylvania and it does snow here, so I definitely wouldn't have minded that. But yeah, a little bit of spinning, but you're not gonna have any issues in merging onto the highway still, because that was a definitely good bit of power. But anyways, 
To go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, 119 feet for all trims, but the F Sport. The F Sport's actually gonna come in at 114 feet. Both of those, extremely impressive numbers. Typically with sedans, you're gonna find the 120s. If not, upper 120s, I think is the worst, but 100 and whatever teen is perfectly fine for any sedan out there. So as far as braking feel goes, it's just right. I would say it maybe leans a little bit on the softer side of things. It's not a firm braking feel by any means, but it is probably just right for the ES350 having said that. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-leg rear suspension. For the F-Sport trim, you're actually going to get an F-Sport tuned suspension. So a little stiffer suspension setup. You may feel a little bit more of the road, but it's also gonna give you a little better handling on the flip side of things. So that's what you get with that. And also lateral performance dampers for all trim levels but the standard that we have today. But having said that, I gotta be honest, ride quality is certainly on point in the ES350. So definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road of perfections. It does feel like a luxury ride quality, even without an adaptive damping suspension or an air suspension or anything fancy like that. Ride quality is 100% perfectly fine for me. As far as steering feel goes, it's one of the first things I noticed when I got in this one, and Lexus always kills it with their steering feel lately. It definitely leans on the heavier side of things, which I personally prefer because it gives the driver a better feeling of being in control. It instantly points you in the direction that you wanna go, and maybe it's cause I got in sport driving mode right now, cause like I said earlier, you guys, the drive modes will adjust the steering sensitivity. So if I were to put it in eco, let's just say, it instantly loosens up. Still a very nice steering feel, actually, to be honest, in the eco mode. All of the steering feels tend to lean on the heavier side, which I personally like. As far as cabin noise goes, I was just going 50 miles per hour back there. There wasn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise whatsoever coming into the cabin. So that's definitely 100% on point as well. Touching on visibility, this is a sedan and a very well-shaped sedan. So you're not gonna have any issues with rear visibility, of course. Also, when I first started driving this thing, I noticed the rain sensing windshield wipers, but I will say, Rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on all trim levels, but that base trim that we have today, but again, because of our package options, we have them. And that's pretty cool because whenever the ES detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on these windshield wipers, kind of like automatic headlights. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there, which is pretty darn cool. And if you were to go with the ultra luxury trim level, you will also get a 10.2 inch color head up display projecting your speed, speed limit, and safety features onto your windshield, which we don't have unfortunately today. But anyways, now having got all of that out of the way, that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Lexus ES350. All right, you guys, so here she is, the new 2022 Lexus ES350 finished in Obsidian. In case anybody was curious of our exterior color name, but let's go ahead and start with the changes on the exterior for 2022, actually. Slightly revised headlamps. I don't know if you guys could tell that or not, but they are a little bit different than the previous year. Revised grille design as well is still in that Lexus spindle shape, but slightly different design overall. And you do have some new wheel options for the 2022 model year, of course, as well. But now let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Revised Lexus spindle front grille with chrome surrounds. And of course, if you go with the F Sport, you are going to turn that into gloss black surround. So a little bit of a difference there. Front air curtains with chrome or gloss black accents. Same situation there, helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little bit better aerodynamics up front. To the sides, when it actually comes to the setup of those lights, it's by led headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. They will come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights in that swoosh shape coming standard, of course, as well. And actually, automatic high beams coming standard for every single trim level across the board as well, which is pretty cool. Essentially, what that is, is when you have your high beams on and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatic automatically dim that back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically put it back up to high beams. So it's kind of like automatic headlights, it's just one less thing you gotta worry about. So that is definitely a pretty cool feature in itself as well. But that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the ES. All right, so now since we are round to the side of this one, chrome or gloss black window surrounds coming standard on this one. Body colored slash gloss black side mirrors is gonna be a combination thing. Of course, with us having the obsidian exterior, 
mirror, you're not going to tell that there is a combination. It's just all going to be black, of course. New side mirrors, by the way, will be heated, coming standard with LED integrated turret signals and power folding for all trim levels, but the standard configuration. So didn't want to mention that, but then taking a look down at the wheel setup, like I said, some new designs for 2022, 17 inch twin V spoke alloy wheels coming standard, 19 inch split five spoke alloys with the F sport. That's going to be your biggest wheel setup because of course F sport being the sportier trim level of the ES. 18 inch 10 spoke alloys then for the luxury and 18 inch split five spoke noise reduction alloys for the ultra luxury i always get a kick when i see this with lexus yes there is such a thing as noise reduction wheels for that extra luxurious ride and that is going to be with the ultra luxury of course so i thought that was pretty cool but that pretty much rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of the es350 shark fin antenna all the way to the top there we actually do have a rear spoiler and by the way that is a 200 option it does not come standard on any of the the trim levels not even the f sport but again it is available for 250 dollars if you want to go that route of course you have that chrome horizontal bar kind of tying in just above the taillights there and when it comes to those taillights led taillights do come standard for every single trim level so you gotta love that and dual exhaust outlets actually integrated into the rear bumper you don't always see that not even with luxury cars all the time so definitely went a step above and beyond integrating them into the rear bumper and i do like that but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so now since we are around back of the ES, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, it is a manual trunk with the exception of if you go with the ultra luxury that gives you a power trunk with the kick sensor as well, meaning you just kick your foot underneath if your hands are full and the trunk is going to open up itself. So that's pretty convenient. But once opened up, car kit capacity comes in at 13.9 cubic feet. Do want to mention there is some LED cargo lighting found in that cargo area as well. You don't always get the LEDs. You usually get the halogens back there. So that was pretty cool to find. Also, what I never see on sedans, well, I shouldn't say never, but very rarely, you actually have two grocery bag hooks back there as well. Typically, that's a feature you find on SUVs, but very rarely on sedans, including my own personal sedan, I don't have those. But with the ES, you get them. And that's pretty cool. I like that. The only drawback really to the cargo area of the ES is that you are unable to actually fold those rear seats down. So if you were happen to maybe be buying a flat screen TV or whatever at Best Buy, it's not gonna fit because you can't fold the rear seats down. But anyways, that's the only drawback. Everything else is done very nicely. Then make our way to the rear legroom. That's gonna come in at 39.2 inches. So for reference, I am even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Rear ventilation does come standard for all trim levels across the board. You do have two USB charging ports back there, but it gets better. You also get a 12 volt power outlet for the rear passengers then as well, which is usually not the case in sedan. So again, well done Lexus there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders that does come standard. And if you wanted a power rear sunshade, you will have to go with the luxury or ultra luxury trim level. So that's how you're gonna go ahead and get that. But then making our way to the front seats, 10-way power front seats with the standard configuration and the F-Sport, 14-way power adjustable front seats for the luxury and ultra luxury. You will find new luxe surfaces coming with the standard configuration or the F-Sport trim level, and then quilted leather for the luxury and ultra luxury. And again, some of these seating configurations are gonna be optional on let's say our standard trim level that we have today because we do have this upgraded leather seats there, but then heated and ventilated front seats coming standard with all trim levels, but that base configuration. But again, because of our option, we do actually have those as well. Memory settings for all trim levels as well well, but the standard configuration, but again, we have those. F-Sport specific bolstered seats then for the F-Sport. And I've said this in all of my other reviews, I feel like F-Sport seats are the most comfortable seats I've ever experienced in my last 600 plus cars that I have reviewed. So they are definitely where you wanna be at if you maybe have a bad back or something like that. Although having said that, we don't have the F-Sport seats today, but still these seats are plenty comfortable. It's just, they're not as good as the F-Sport seats. That's all I'm saying. But then making our way to the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It will come with a new Lux finish for the F-Sport wood leather combination for the luxury and ultra luxury and then a heated steering wheel is going to come with the luxury and ultra luxury as well and again available 
for the base trim that we have today. And yet again, we have that option, but it is a very smooth leather feel that we have in our base trim today. I will say that I'm definitely a big fan of how the steering wheel feels. 10 to grips are bolstered on the thicker side of things as well. So definitely a fan of the way that is set up. Then making our way to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key. You do have your Lexus logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and that button to unlock that rear trunk as well. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start for all trim levels across the board. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there. And so once started up, this actually is a pretty darn cool gauge cluster, I will admit. Tachometer and speedometer are front and center. Essentially you have your fuel information and your engine temp all the way to your right, and then everything to your left, you can control by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. So that makes sense. Now we'll give you things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty average miles per gallon, tire pressure of each individual tire, and so on. But the cool thing is when you change the drive modes through that stock thingy I was telling you guys about earlier, if you put it in sport, you have more red and white hues. It looks so dang cool. If you put it in eco, you're gonna have a bunch of blue hues and then it's back to normal if you put it in the normal driving mode. But I like how the colors adjust depending upon which drive mode that you put it on. So I thought that was pretty cool. Then making our way to overall interior quality, a power moonroof is actually going to come standard on every single trim level across the board. Thought that was pretty cool. You usually don't get that. Dual zone climate control coming standard with all trims as well. Wireless phone charger coming with all trim levels, but the standard configuration, although we do have that option, it's gonna be found within the center armrest here. So you just lay your phone down there and as long as your phone is capable or compatible, I should say, it will charge up automatically without you having to plug it in. That's pretty cool. Wood trim with ambient lighting coming with the luxury and ultra luxury. We do have that wood trim, of course, again today. Ultimately, I love this spec that we have today because I like the black and the saddle brown leather combination. I like the wood trim because it kind of goes with the saddle brown leather. So it's a very cool spec that Bobby Ray Hall Lexus put together here. I like the contrast stitching found just above the passenger side glove box. Also love the door handles. This is something Lexus does. They kind of make their door handles look like samurai swords almost because of course it being a Japanese brand. So definitely a huge fan of that. Just in front of the shifter, you will find one cup holder, there's two USB charging ports, auxiliary port, and a little slot where you can put your phone if you wanted to. Just behind that, you will find a cup holder that is actually two tiers. There is a button that says push. If you push that, some little thing is going to come down and that is going to be for your shorter beverages. So, two would have mentioned that. And within the center armrest, again, you have your wireless phone charger and a decent amount of storage within there as well. But overall, I love the contrast of these two colors and I like how the black comes all the way up the A pillar but then when you get to the top part of the vehicle it goes back to that saddle brown so it's definitely a very cool look on the interior without a doubt of this thing. You do have a uh, auto dimming rear view mirror with home light control up to three different garage doors as well. I don't want to forget to mention that. But anyways, let's all go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because there is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes standard for all trim levels, but the ultra luxury. But I will say we don't have that one today. We have the 12.3 inch color touchscreen display. It's massive and it comes with the ultra luxury and it's actually optional on all other trim levels. And yet again, we have that option, but either way you do get Bluetooth and audio streaming, either way you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, there is gonna be factory navigation system that comes with the 12.3 inch screen that we have today. You can check out your weather information up there, climate control information, radio information, of course, as well. And that leads me into the sound systems. And so the way the sound systems work with the ES is actually there is a 10 speaker sound system that comes standard for every single trim level across the board. That's the one we have today, but there is an optional Mark Levinson sound system that comes with 17 speakers and 1800 watts. That might be possibly the most wattage I've ever seen in a vehicle. So that's pretty darn impressive. Would have loved to have tested that out, but Having said that, 10 speakers is still a decent amount of speakers when you're used to seeing six and eight speaker sound systems on other vehicles out there. So having said that, let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out our 10 speaker sound system that we have in our Lexus ES today. <laughs> It definitely sounds like more than just a standard sound system. That's really good, actually. And 10 speakers, like I said, is a decent amount. So I wasn't 100% sure what to expect, but that's definitely more on the high end of things. Even without the Mark Levinson sound system, and by the way, that Mark Levinson sound system, I'm sure, is amazing. 
This one's still really, really good to be quite honest. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the ES in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming stated across the board with a couple different views in the bottom left hand corner there. You guys can see that, but as always that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus for the ES350, which pretty much says it all right there. That's the very highest rating IIHS gives out. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard across the board will include a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane trace assist, lane departure alert with steering assist, assist, road sign assist, dynamic radar cruise control, I always love that feature, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, so you don't turn into the vehicle and your blind spot's going to be those little car indicators in your side mirrors, of course. Then luxury and ultra luxury trim levels are going to add to that intuitive parking assist and automatic braking as well. And so ultimately, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ES350, incredible reliability. You guys could just pick up a Consumer Reports magazine at the grocery store and you'll see the ES350 has an incredible rating by Consumer Reports when it comes to reliability. Mark Levinson sound system, I'm sure, would be great. I've tested those out in other Lexuses before. It really is an incredible sound system there. F Sport seats are the best in the world as far as my opinion goes. And again, testing maybe 625-ish vehicles at this point. Still my favorite seats to date. As far as the room for improvement goes with the ES, the rear seats don't fold down, which is kind of a bummer. I would have liked that added practicality or utility, whichever word you want to use there. No all-wheel drive as well for the 350. You can get it on the 250. I really think it should be available on the 350. And that's just my personal opinion, but that's pretty much all I got for this one as far as constructive criticism goes. Let me know what you guys think of the new ES350 in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.